Hi everyone, I'm Jennifer Gandy. I work for the Prehistory Research Project in the Galt School of Archaeological Research as a lithic analyst. I feel honored to have had the chance to share with you some of the current research going on with our primary site of focus, Galt. Herein I will be presenting some of the preliminary refitting research and the data collected on the lithic debitage from some of the oldest components of the Galt site. To begin, in brief, refitting is the process of reassembling, as much as possible, artifact fragments, the most common artifact type used in this form of analysis being lithics. The refitting process itself, especially for heavily occupied sites, can be likened to attempting to piece together several three-dimensional puzzles, each potentially having hundreds or even thousands of pieces that have been mixed, have some pieces missing, and which no longer come with their boxes or instructions for references of what each completed puzzle should look like. As you can imagine from this description, this form of analysis can be a very daunting task. However, it is a very useful tool for aiding in the interpretations of archaeological sites and lithic technologies. The lithic artifacts examined for the refitting analysis discussed herein are from the Galt site, which is located near Florence, Texas. While much work has been done at the site, both professional archaeological excavation and non-professional digging in the past, its surface is still covered in lithic debris. Only a relatively small portion of the site has been excavated, which makes the fact that so many lithic artifacts have been recovered that much more remarkable. Galt has produced very impressive amounts of Clovis tools and debitage, possibly the largest known collection of Clovis artifacts in the Americas at this time, and lithic stratigraphic and dating analyses provide sound evidence that the site has been occupied well before Clovis. The Prehistory Research Project group is currently working on a monograph detailing the site in its background and highlighting the analyses of the Clovis and older, now termed Galt assemblage, components of areas 12 and 15 of the site. My focus was directed on the lithic debitage from the Clovis and older components of area 15, primarily from 12 full 1 by 1 meter unit columns and 2 half units. For this presentation, however, I will just be focusing on the part of the analysis focusing on the Clovis component materials. The Clovis component from this area is roughly 40 centimeters thick. Over 15,000 pieces of debitage were recovered just from this component, not including the identified tools or 8th inch general collected lithics which would conservatively bring the lithic total to over 32,000 pieces. With such a great amount of debitage to go through, sampling is necessary to perform as thorough an analysis as possible. Any flakes that were roughly 1 8 inch in size or smaller were excluded from the refitting sample. The remaining amount of debitage, however, was still staggering. Thus, a size cutoff of roughly 20 millimeters was chosen based on suggested size cutoffs in previous works. The remaining sample was spread out on trays across several tables, and over time, a series of refitting strategies were attempted, including analysis by horizontal, vertical, diagonal, single unit, and artifact type distributions. Special attention was paid to features on the lithics such as shape, size, presence of cortex and flake scars, raw material type, inclusions, type and position of any breaks or material flaws, color, and any natural chemical staining such as iron or manganese. Once refits were found, and they were sorted into type groups, which were based on several categories utilized in previous studies from around the world. These refit type groups included technological, conjoined, carbonate conjoined, thermally shattered, and near-fit refitting sets. 
Technological refit sets are refits in which lithic pieces fit back together sequentially, such as flakes successively uh, napped from a, a biface refitting back together, or such as a flake fitting back onto the surface of a biface. Conjoined refit sets are lithic pieces which fit back together along a snap or break. Carbonate conjoined refit sets are pieces which have been broken in antiquity but which had been held nearly together by carbonic accretions. And thermally shattered refit sets are pieces which had been broken apart due to extreme thermal exposure, but which can still be refit back together. And near fit re refit sets are pieces which do not exactly refit, but which have features that suggest they're from the same original piece. Finally, all the data collected was spatially analyzed using JMP Pro 14 statistical software. Twenty refit sets were identified from this preliminary analysis. Spatial analysis graphs illustrated that the pieces from these refitting sets were close in overall vertical and horizontal distance the greatest distance between refitting pieces being about 0.45 meters. The close proximity between the refitting pieces suggests that little disturbed any individual pieces after they were initially broken. Thus, there appears to have been little movement of artifact pieces through the galt soils, and this lends support to the argument that Area 15 has good stratigraphic integrity. This is especially important for our interpretations of the components below the Clovis component. Looking at the types of refits found, of the total 20 refitting sets, 12 were conjoining sets, 3 were carbonate conjoined sets, 4 were thermally shattered sets, and 1 set was a near fit. No technological refits were identified from the Clovis component. Taking into account the total number of refitting pieces and the total approximate debitage count, excluding the, the 1 8 inch debitage, a refit success rate of about 0.28% was achieved. Now I understand the initial knee-jerk reaction to these numbers. Only 20 refitting sets out of the thousands of flakes and tools? And only a 0.28% refitting success rate? These were my initial thoughts, too. What had I done wrong? But after doing more research, I actually found that getting results like these is not only okay, but somewhat normal for large sites that have been heavily occupied over time. To give two quick examples, uh, 18,000 Paleo-Indian lithics from the Shawnee Menacing site in Pennsylvania were analyzed, with only 40 refitting sets being identified. And from the Magdalenian Age settlement of Gonersdorf, a refit analysis of 11,000 flakes yielded only a 5% success rate. There are several factors that often lead to limited refitting success rates for prolific sites with good stratigraphic context. The most prominent factor is the size of the assemblage recovered from a site. There is a significant negative relationship between assemblage size and refitting success rate, meaning that success rate often decreases as assemblage size increases. Smaller assemblages tend to be easier to sort through and often allow for multiple attempts at piece-by-piece -piece refitting. It is estimated that about 5,000 to 6,000 lithic specimens would be the maximum assemblage size for getting the best potential refit success rate, which the number of lithics from the Area 15 Clovis component greatly exceeds. And some of the next factors to consider are the intensity of site occupation and reuse and the magnitude of an excavation area versus the total utilized area. The last part meaning that we remain aware that some refitting pieces may have been at the site, but could have been outside the excavated area and thus not collected. 
In addition to this, countless flakes, formal tools, and cores were undoubtedly taken from the site as groups of people moved into and out of an area, which increases the difficulty of recognizing refits. Yet another major factor is the raw material of the artifacts. Refitting can be exceedingly difficult for large assemblages that either have great variation in material or which have little to no variation. The gold artifacts, for example, are mostly made from local, fine-grained Edwards chert with some variation in iron and manganese staining. Additionally, thermal alteration affects the appearance and structure of raw materials. Though it is interesting to mention that it was the distinctive pot lidding and crazing patterns that aided in the identification of four of our Clovis refitting sets. Finally, two of the last major factors affecting refit success rate are artifact size and the time allotted for analysis. Larger pieces are easier to see and examine and thus potentially easier to refit. And excluding the, the smallest lithics, it can save some analysis time. The refitting analyses for the Clovis and older components of Area 15 lasted over two years off and on due to the still extraordinary amount of flakes to examine and could likely have gone on for even longer if a cutoff had not been necessary and to move on to the multitude of other analyses needing attention. And so what are some of the things that we can take away from this preliminary analysis? One of the human behaviors we can see is the predominant use of local material for tool making. Also, the sheer amount of lithics recovered from the Area 15 Clovis component emphasizes just how long and heavily used this part of the, of the Galt site was. The spatial analysis of the refitting pieces lends more support for stratigraphic integrity of, of this area, and this set up a case for investigating the, compo the components below the Clovis component. I performed refit analyses for these lower components as well, and a more in-depth discussion of these and of the Clovis analysis can be found in the upcoming Galt monograph. Thank you all for your interest in hearing a bit about the work we're doing at Galt, and thank you for the opportunity to participate in this Festival of Lithics. A quick thank you also to my very supportive family, my Dalton Prehistory Research Project co-workers, and our colleagues, as well as our volunteers, interns, and members that help keep us going in our research. And of course, a quick shout out to my furry baby, Bolin, for helping to keep me sane and entertained with his company during this pandemic. And thank you, everyone. And I will leave off here with a list of the primary references I used in my research on refit analysis that have been cited herein.